Welcome back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover Robert Noyce, an American physicist and businessman known for inventing the integrated circuit. The 19th century was dominated by government and their military arms. After the Great Wars, the world became increasingly dominated by bankers, who many today accuse of running a shadow government. The elites of the 20th century have been financiers like J.P. Morgan or Warren Buffett. Enter the 21st century, and a new class of elites have been rearing its head. Engineers. This is because engineers build and maintain the infrastructure we all depend on for survival. In other words, we need them more than they need us. The sector representing these technical giants is known as Silicon Valley, and their growing influence has trickled into the world of mainstream. New archetypes like Iron Man have become darlings in popular culture, proving that public opinion is behind them. Once upon a time, the top minds in a country wanted to work in finance. Now all the Ivy Leaguers are competing for a place in Silicon Valley. Tech has become so powerful that its influence is now rivaling that of government, the intelligence community. And with cryptocurrencies, even the untouchable bankers are not safe. Undoubtedly, societies of the future will be ruled by a technical elite, magicians in a world of numbers. Before we focus too much on the future, however, let's look at the past. What was the start of Silicon Valley? How did it get its name? Well, our guest in this episode is one of the key persons who started it all. In fact, Robert Noyce is often coined as the father of Silicon Valley a huge title for anyone, whether dead or living. As always, let's start with a brief background. Robert Noyce was born on December 12, 1927, in Burlington, Iowa. He is the fourth son of Reverend Ralph Brewster Noyce and his wife, Marriott Norton. Fun fact, Noyce's brother, Gaylord Brewster Noyce, was arrested for being one of the freedom riders of the civil rights movement. This equal rights humanitarian view, embraced by the Noyce family, would trickle in Silicon Valley as we will see later in the episode. Anyway, Robert Noyce exhibited a talent for math and science at a very young age. When Noyce was just 12 years old, he and his brother built a boy-sized aircraft. Later, Noyce built a radio from scratch, as well as many other technical innovations. By the time he was an undergraduate, Noyce was fascinated by the world of physics, and one of his professors suggested he apply for a doctoral program at MIT, which he did, and of course got accepted. In 1953, Noyce received his PhD from MIT in solid-state physics. His dissertation was on a technology he found most fascinating, the transistor. Little did he know, this was about to change the entire world of computing. After graduating MIT, Noyce took a job as a research engineer at the Philco Corporation in Philadelphia. He left three years later in 1956 to join William Shockley's Semiconductor Laboratory in Mountain View, California. By the way, William Shockley is a co-inventor of the transistor a necessary precursor of the integrated circuit. He actually won a Nobel Prize for this achievement, and I consider him a culturally important person. Let me know in a comment section if you would like me to do an episode on him. Anyway, Noyce would leave Shockley's laboratory a year later due to his terrible management style. Noyce was part of the treacherous eight that left Shockley to found a Fairchild Semiconductor Corporation. Two years later, while at Fairchild, Robert Noyce invented the monolithic integrated circuit. The year was 1959. The integrated circuit had been invented a year earlier by Jack Kilby. His version was made out of germanium, a heavier, more unstable element. Robert Noyce's integrated circuit was made out of silicon, which was not only more stable, but cheaper and significantly lighter. The silicon they use in integrated circuits is actually made from sand which further proved the statement I had made in a Georgia Guidestone episode. Resources are in the mine. Someday, what we call useless weeds will be a vital resource. Anyway, both Kilby and Noyce ended up being awarded co-inventor of the integrated circuit 
but it was Noyce's silicon version that conquered the world. For those of you who don't know, electrical circuits do their job using a variety of components. Resistors, inductors, capacitors, diodes, transistors, all brought together to perform a greater function. Prior to ICs, these components were all separate and connected via wires. This made computers large, bulky, and full of internal cables. In fact, prior to integrated circuits, computers were the size of 26 refrigerators. Robert Noyce's device integrated all these individual parts into a single little chip, hence the name integrated circuit. You can imagine why this discovery is such a revolutionary breakthrough. After 10 years at Fairchild, Noyce left with Gordon Moore to found a new company called Intel. Another side note, Gordon Moore is the man behind Moore's Law, which predicts that the number of transistors in an integrated circuit will double every two years. Moore's Law is not a law of physics, but so far, his observation has proven accurate. Anyway, three years later, while Noyce was at Intel, he would oversee the invention of another revolutionary technology, the microprocessor. The rest became history. Intel is now a multi-billion dollar corporation, grossing $79 billion in revenue last year alone. Noyce accumulated a net worth of $4 billion before passing away in 1990 at the young age of 62. There are very few people I admire as much as Robert Noyce, perhaps Henry Ford or Howard Hughes. Noyce did not share Ford's racist ideologies, however, nor did he go insane like Howard Hughes did, so this puts him above both individuals. What I really like about Noyce was how multifaceted he was as a person. He was a top-notch diver and an airplane pilot. Despite his mental brilliance and physical prowess, the man remained remarkably humble. Noyce brought to Intel and Fairchild Semiconductor a relaxed culture where corporate politics and formalities were minimized and employees were allowed to be themselves. This relaxed culture would permeate throughout the entire tech industry, hence also making Noyce a pioneer in business management. Silicon Valley is now a place where you can make your own hours and wear hoodies to work. This all started with Robert Noyce. Most importantly, however, the fact that IC chips are made up of silicone is the very reason why Silicon Valley is called Silicon Valley. Robert Noyce really is the father of this industry. Speaking of integrated circuits, one place you can check out is the Intel Museum at their headquarters in Santa Clara, California. The place is 10,000 square feet, so it's huge. It exhibits a large number of Intel's products, as well as the history of semiconductors in general. You also get to see what it's like inside a highly automated silicon chip factory which is super cool to say the least. The best part about all this is that the museum is free. Those of you who want to visit the Intel Museum should save this location on a Cityscape app. The revolutionary shift the integrated circuit has brought to us is beyond question. Modern computing and all the multimedia telecommunications we enjoy every day is based on this technology. This remarkably astounding contribution to mankind did not go unnoticed. During his lifetime, Robert Noyce was given numerous awards. In 1979, Noyce was awarded with the National Medal of Science, the highest honors in the field of science and engineering. The award was presented to Noyce by President Jimmy Carter. In 1987, Noyce was again awarded with a top honor, the National Medal of Technology, the highest honors in the field of invention. It was presented by Ronald Reagan. Noyce was a real-life Tony Stark. He was a billionaire athlete who went to MIT and helped found the most powerful industry of our time. It is quite unfortunate that so few people know of him. So the next time you find yourself enjoying a personal computer, don't think of Elon Musk, but of Robert Noyce. See you next time.